just moving around a little bit. Don't mind me. This meeting is being live streamed. Got it. Got it. Okay. <laughs> and I think that means we're live right now, even though it's still loading on my end. So yeah. I didn't really share it on anything. I just figured I'd pop on. Yeah, that's fine. Let me. I'm um, not really sure how to anyways. I am actually going to tag you right now. Okay. I don't know what that means, but I think it, <laughs> I think that means people can see it. Uh, yes. Oh, it took me somewhere new. Hi, everybody that's watching. <laughs> Give us just a minute while we figure this out. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, actually, maybe what I'll do is I will, um, I, I will tag you afterwards then. Okay, no worries. I figured yeah. we just play. I'm going to give myself a little booster seat here. Yeah. And I'm going to get back to our screen. Uh, Hi, everybody. We wanted to, um, we wanted to just hop in. Carrie and I talk almost every day and we'd love to kind of flow together. And so um, we don't like to plan a lot before things like this <laughs> because our agenda gets in the way, you know, at least for me, that's how it works. And so I like to just kind of, we're both very, you know, tapped into the energies and what's happening right now. And when we get together, we tend to bring through just really amazing things. And we just wanted to kind of share that as a pre-Thanksgiving flow. Um, well, we feel like they're pretty amazing. We think we're, yeah, right. You guys might think we're just crazy, but we're just going to go for it, right? right? <laughs> so I, I was talking to Carrie just a minute ago about gratitude. And of course, everyone's, that's on their mind, you know, because of Thanksgiving, but how powerful that is to shift our energy into a higher frequency, if you want to call it that, a higher timeline. And it sounds so simple, but it's profound. It's profoundly simple. How right. that shift can really help us mm -hmm. to begin to go uh, into these other places. Yeah, it mm -hmm. seems really easy, but I mean, it literally can take a split second just to bring us up just a little bit. So that if we're feeling in that, for me, gratitude just brings me into more coherent, like more coherence. Mm. Like my space is just more balanced and it takes me out of whatever it is that I'm thinking about. And it puts me into my heart mm. a little bit easy, you know, a little bit more. Would be I love my that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. I actually, on that note, um, we talk about, Carrie and I talk about bliss a lot, <laughs> like the bliss bliss states, you know, and they're not, act, we've been told that bliss is like, Ooh, like sunshine and rainbows. And sometimes it's actually really messy to be in this bliss state. But I, when people say, well, find your bliss, it's kind of like, well, what is that exactly? And so most people can make that step towards gratitude. And that's kind of like, I would say the first step towards bliss, if you want to call it, what do you think, Carrie? Do you feel I like love that? the fact that you're bringing up the bliss factor. <laughs> I don't know if that's a thing I'm calling it the bliss factor because I always thought, you know, I was always kind of back and I know Candace and I had talked about this before too, the law, like the law of attraction stuff. And I always like, okay, I just have to be in that space. Like you said, of sunshine and rainbows. And sometimes that's just not what it's about from my perspective. For me, it's like that process and it's about just being a little bit in harmony I guess, mm -hmm. harmony and understanding, um, staying in that space of, being in that space of gratitude can bring us into a place of just a little bit more harmony with our environment, with our bodies, with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. So for me, bliss is more coherence. And you know, it's interesting because I think Dan, like I, I bring up Dan Winter a lot, as you know, I'm like kind of, I'm, somebody years ago was like, have you ever looked, watched Dan Winter? So for anybody watching, if you guys don't know who Dan Winter is, or if you haven't watched him, I highly encourage it for everybody because a lot of the writing that I was doing was in tune with what he talks about scientifically. Mm. And if you listen to what he talks about and also what heart math talks about, it is more of a space of coherence rather than being in this high sunshine and rainbows, everything's fantastic. Everything's wonderful. And by the way, that's not like a bad place to be, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're there, awesome. But then I think sometimes what happens is then when we're not there, we feel like something's wrong or we're not doing something right or something's off. I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> yeah. So it's like not, I think when we're just in more of that space of it's the it's that sine wave right it's a flow it's not high it's not low it's just kind of like okay 
this is what I'm feeling right now. And it's almost more gentle, I think. That's my perspective. Yeah, like not a, not attaching to wherever you're at. Like, I feel like that is part of this uh, wave you're talking about is yeah. when I'm not feeling great and I'm going through stuff in my body, not attaching and thinking that there's something wrong yeah. actually helps me stay in the flow of mm-hmm. moving into a, another space. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And also um, just taking a moment sometimes is really important. Like, let's say we're feeling kind of anxious or we're feeling like we've, we're just not in that space. And then when we stop coming back to the gratitude, portion. Um, and we just stop and say, you know, I'm really grateful right now for my breath. I'm really grateful that I have, you know, food on my table. I'm really grateful for my friend or my mom or whoever it is just really quick to bring that into our awareness. And then all of a sudden ask ourselves, how do I feel after expressing that? And generally speaking, we just feel better. Even if it's like just a tiny little bit, because sometimes it's those tiny little bits. And when I say that, I always hear bits like information, right? Like that's when we open to more and that's when the downloads were because we're in that space of like, just that little bit higher Mm. and higher. I don't even like to use the word higher because I don't know if that's more expansive, I guess. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's like there's a shift when I feel into it, but there's a shift that happens in my body from sympathetic like running constantly going to like the parasympathetic nerve you know the nervous system feeling calm with gratitude or coherence like you're talking about brings me into that space a lot faster and from that space is where I get all my downloads actually right most most of the time you know and so it's like it creates that opening yeah it is it's almost like that um I don't know. Some people call it like sometimes we get confused what zero point is, what neutrality is and what all of this, all of that. All well, What's this? Well, what's that? And it's just kind of allowing ourselves to relax a little bit so that we can uh, just find space for ourselves and not worry about any of that other stuff as well. Because I think when we're in a place of bliss, we're out, we're more um, he- maybe hemisync, like we're not just in our left brain analytical feeling. We're more just in that feeling creative And like you said, we can be more in tune with what's coming in Mm -hmm. or what's already there. Yeah. I think is big too. (laughs) Cause all of a sudden we're like, oh, that's been there the whole time. And I'm just now recognizing that. Okay. Totally. (laughs) Just like like the holographic universe that we live in. Oh, okay. Now I'm starting to see the reflection back to me. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. And then feeling gratitude for that. Right. Oh, geez. <laughs> yeah. Not like, how come I didn't see this before? Right. But feeling gratitude that we're seeing it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Oh my God. And, and gratitude doesn't mean bypass it or like, that's such a big piece of this is like, Oh, just, you know, people think of we're bypassing, you know, by yeah. not you can, in fact, it's, I feel like this is what we're being called to actually is, you know, when we're struggling, that gratitude, we can hold both at the same time. And that's not yeah. something that our brain, it's our ego wants to just attach to mostly the pain a lot of the time. And yeah. so really kind of uh, broadening that and allowing ourselves to have both at the same time is like the work right now. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, we can yeah. still be in a place of gratitude and still acknowledge that there are things that were uncomfortable with or processing yeah want to change yeah yeah and i think that's part of more of again that coherence because if you look at it it's not um it's finding that rhythm it's not you know we may not be um completely in a blissed out spacey type you know we can but see that's one of the things that's valuable about it i think because as a human part of what I think we're doing is, is experiencing, right? Otherwise we're, we're, it's like, we're able to experience the pain, if you want to call it that, or the discomfort or uh, coinciding with, or in the same reality with, in the same body as, in the same timeline as gratitude. Ooh, 
right? It's like like interwoven in all things if we can find it. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I don't know what you just shifted for me, but something. (laughs) I don't know either because I just got goosebumps. I'm like, ooh, I feel like this is fun. We're going. So I'm seeing it. So when I say these, and we do this all the time, but for those, if if anybody's watching and kind of tuning in, when we go into flow, I see pictures or I'll hear words or I'll get little, I call a mapping, like I'll ping into something, right? And so as we're talking about this, I just feel a space opens. And all of this information, again, because we're kind of in this place of coherence, I guess, that just opens for all of these different, mm, we could call it connections to gratitude and recognizing that it is not a separate thing from us. Mm -hmm. It is part of us because it's through our heart that we find that space of gratitude, which essentially brings us, I feel, into more compassion. Mm-hmm. And that in itself is, mm, we can have compassion for ourselves, even when we're experiencing pain, or we can be grateful that, you know, sometimes we're in that space where we're like, we're really uncomfortable. I don't like what I'm feeling, but I'm actually really grateful for what it's showing me right now. Yes. I mean, there's so many different yes. trails we could follow on this, I, I think. Know. Yeah, I'm actually opening up to, when when I talk to Carrie, uh, I see pictures as well. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like opening up to see like maybe what, what wants to come in. So I wasn't really open to that before, but I'm just going to set that intention now. <laughs> if, we wanna, if we want to flow in that. Oh yeah, I didn't even think way. about that. Oh, that would be yeah. fun. If you, if it feels good to you, but I'm just like setting that intention now to just allow any messages that want to come in. Yeah. And around. I think it might be kind of fun to talk about that um, okay. step, by the way, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah, like, What's the difference? Weren't we just um, in flow, but we were, right? Well, let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, I'll just speak for me. I was still just a minute ago, I was still operating here mm-hmm. more. And when I stepped back and went, oh, wait a minute, coherence, I my process is I do have to set an intention and then there's a space that actually opens. I can't really describe it other than that. Um, what about yeah. you, Carrie? What is that like for you? Same thing. I was thinking, you know, as I was as we're talking about it and analytically, I'm analyzing, ooh, how does that feel? What does that look like for me? Um, what process is kind of open when I'm in a space of gratitude? And to me, that's all left brain. Yeah. But then when we're feeling into it and we're just, it's when we talk about things like this, what it does is it does open up that space for us to feel into what it is that we're, what, we're, what it is that we're sharing. But that's just one perspective. <laughs> The other perspective is that when we we speak about these things and we visualize them, we're then creating it from one perspective because um, we're manifesting in our bodies the similar feelings that are attached to that experience. Mm. If that makes sense, that's kind Mm -hmm. of what I'm Mm -hmm. seeing it as. So then we begin to experience, you know, oh, what would it feel like to be? I am grateful for this. And just by going, oh, yeah, I am grateful for this. That's the logical side all of a sudden we're in the feeling side of feeling it. Right. And that can help us get into more of our right brain, but not even just our right brain. It's more of a coherence with the brain and the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I guess that would be another way of looking at it. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, so the flow. Yeah. So when we go into flow, it just, it's more of a feeling, don't you think rather oh, than, yeah. but I have a tendency to interpret what I'm flowing into sometimes, which, so I go back and forth a little bit. You do. Yeah. You, you're really, you the way your brain works is amazing. Like that. Uh, I think, I mean, it's that's nice. <laughs> it is. It's like, you're like amazing in that way. I, mine comes in as like body sensations and feelings and images. And then from there I can interpret kind of what the message is. So like when you were just speaking about gratitude and, and the shift from left to right, my tail, my whole tailbone was like on fire. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Okay. And this is important because some people don't recognize when they're getting yeah. like, well, what does that look like? What does that feel like? How am I, how do I know right. that I'm opening to this? Yeah. It's, but it starts with the intention for, so for me, I say an intention of, I am now opening to deeper insight and information. Mm-hmm. So my higher self is online and then I'm on board as well. And then my body starts to get these like pings. And then I, so my tailbone 
is now like there's a lot of sensation in that area and now I what is being shown to me right now is the snake somehow so the kundalini yeah. rising so that could oh, just yeah. be for me I don't know it could just be my my own thing um but it does have to do something with the coherence and and then the word implosion is coming to mind right now. yes <laughs> so let's talk about that so yeah. again Dan Winters right yeah. um so from, yeah, so I feel like it's it's so it's so funny because earlier I was kind of pinging off spark, like we're lighting the match, we're creating that spark, we're matching those frequencies, and then what happens is it literally zips up, zip lines up the line, up our spine, into <laughs> that frequency, into that connectivity where everything lights up from one perspective, yeah. and that could be a way that we feel, and then we feel I feel more. Um, at ease mm -hmm. and almost like I'm, you just feel, and everybody's different, right? Some people feel more relaxed. Some people feel more energized. I go through both. I kind of do a little bit of everything. Sometimes I just feel super chill and I just, and other times it's like zing, 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 depending on maybe how I'm feeling that day. Mm -hmm. Also depending on the energy that we're tapping into so I, I just thought that was important because I have had people say, well, how do I know if I'm in flow? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I don't know. And all of a sudden I know, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, especially <laughs> in the beginning, right? When I first started doing this, synchronicities too. Yeah. They'll yeah. just start popping up left and right. And you're like, wait a minute. Like, okay, I just wanted to share this really quick before you go into flow, the crocodile that I yeah. shared. So. Oh, yeah crocodile i dreamed about it then it was on the tv show then i just poured a cup not uh paying attention to what cup i poured <laughs> yeah of course of course right. alligator crocodile i'm getting goosebumps so i feel the go goosebumps are that physical sign that you're on that right track or or it's more like you said implosion mm -hmm. i think it's described as having a shareable thought uh yeah right your dna is like yes and so we're having this shareable thought that can then be expressed and it can um, in turn ripple out into the frequency that we're, we're connecting into together and sharing by being in this expression. So um, it's not just one thing and it's not just one. Oh, and this kind of goes back to how we were talking earlier as the communication, like oh, yeah. it opens up how many different varieties that we can communicate in. Yes. So like you might be feeling it and you might be like, I feel inspired to go do some yoga or dance or whatever. Anyways, I kind of went off on a tangent there, so I'll bring it back in. But um, no. yeah, so do you want to start? Um, but the thing of it is, so now we're in flow. We're in Even flow, we're yeah. Back and forth. <laughs> we're totally in flow, yeah. Yeah, so it's like we'll see these pictures and then we just, so part of it, I, I think, also in this processing is about just trusting what's coming through and recognizing that the universal symbology and the universal language uses everything in yeah. order to communicate, including your body sensations, right, our environment. I might say a word and you might see a picture that has nothing to do with the word I said, but it's attached to a memory that you had that is now pinging into the vibration of the communication that we're looking to explain, express, create. Yep. Yeah. And tr trust is everything in this yeah. in process, right? Trusting, yeah. just, just letting go. Yeah. Yeah. I always uh, say, let it rip, rest in peace. Like just be in that and all the pieces of information will then like ripping from it onto a CD, you know, when you have that stored information and you transfer it, it's like, mm -hmm. all right, that's what it feels like. I think, yeah. and I know I speak in code, but it's no. just... <laughs> picking it up, <laughs> picking up what you're putting down. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So I didn't mean to, that was on court. I felt like it was maybe important for us to talk about that and how it, it occurs for us. I think it is. I, I, <clears throat> I mean, I've had an influx. Uh, well, I've told you this, but a lot an influx of people interested in learning mm -hmm. how they can have direct access to their own intuition and to yeah. that. It's just such a, a, th a collective thing com mm -hmm. coming down the pipeline. That's literally how I see it. It's like, this is dropping in, Yeah. you know, and it's here for the collective and they're wanting it. Everybody's yeah. like, okay, how do I have direct 
connection to my truth. Period. Yeah. And so this is timely, definitely. Wow. And it's subtle too, right? Sometimes like you were talking about that base of your spine, mm -hmm. you know, paying attention to that is a symbol or a sign or me paying attention. Oh, wow. I've seen crocodile now three times, you know, mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And that goes back to what you said of for you setting your intention. Yes. Yeah. It's like that focused intent. So now you've already said this is what I'm focusing on for me. I'm saying, oh, I'm acknowledging the signs that are coming in, which then is me giving my attention mm -hmm. with focused intention into that saying, okay, I'm listening. Yes. And from that, it's so funny. I see that right there, what you described, it's like, I call it the God particle or like the spark mm -hmm. in us gets excited and is like, oh, you're listening. Oh my God. And then they, it wants to give us more. And I'll, and it, that's kind of like the back and forth that I experience is when I say, I see you, I acknowledge you, I'm listening. Then it gives more, uh, the more that I trust. It's yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yes. I feel the same way. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> lots of big energy today. Yeah. And even when we say lots of big energy, we want to talk about the physical a little bit and then go into the flow from there and we can put it all together. You think, I mean, we're sure. still kind of now I'm back in left brain analytical, but, um, cause you had gone through a lot of physical stuff. And when you say there's lots of big energy, I, re yeah. I remember when I first was like, what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what is big energy? <laughs> yeah. Like, Hmm. Is that what I'm feeling? <laughs> yeah. Well, so for me, what big energy means for me is um, a lot of times what it feels like is either I'm like high as a kite, like feeling like my feet are, aren't even on the ground mm -hmm. for the day. Like I'm just flowing through life or sometimes big energy for me feels like massive triggers in my, like, like I want to crawl out of my skin and there's not, nothing has happened. Like there's no it's just, I want to, Oh, that's how it feels for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a good description. <laughs> yeah. I just want to crawl out of my skin. Yeah. I feel like, um, same way. Um, sometimes too, we can get really tired because we've experienced a bunch of big energy and it's time to, um, <laughs> it's like condense it and to dissolve it and to integrate it and all that. I tend to feel very spacey, very lightheaded. I get a lot of physical symptoms depending on what it is that I'm integrating, processing, downloading, whatever we want to call it. And I feel like too, it's not just any one particular thing, but yeah, yeah sometimes I'll, I'll talk with someone of like big energy. I'm not really sure, but then they didn't sleep at all last night. Right. <laughs> right. You know, or um, they feel really, they can't remember anything. <laughs> That's all. Or they sleep life. all the time or they just want to sleep all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's what it feels like to me. Sometimes it feels like, um, like you said, you want to crawl out of your skin, itchy skin. I get really itchy electrical for me. It's electricity all, all 99% yeah. of the time. It's electrical. Do you find that your dreams change too with the energy or no? Mm -hmm. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Processing shadow is always fun. <laughs> <laughs> you do it so well, though. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know how graceful I do it, but um, thank you. Yeah, I do it well because I have my my support group, my friends and people who understand um, in their own way what it is. And I can share that with you guys and with certain close friends of mine and family too. It's like, if, you know, otherwise I think like before I met you guys and before I met some of my closest friends that I have now, and before I think, um, yeah, things have shifted. I felt like I couldn't, I didn't have anybody to talk about it with. So I really did think I was going crazy. Mm. Everybody else thought I was going crazy too. <laughs> Well, I know you're not alone and I've heard that from many people. That yeah. That. yeah. That's why I kind of wanted to bring it up because there might be somebody going, oh, that's why I've been feeling what I've been feeling. Yeah. Totally. You're not alone. Totally. Oh God. No. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we put all that together. No. 
Um, I feel like it comes all back, like if we bring it back to the gratitude and the coherence, and it really is about finding that space where we connect the brain and the heart. Mm. And we're not just really overanalyzing or stuck completely in the emotions either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. It's funny because I'm like the heart, the brain, and the middle, like the middle, the midpoint is the throat, <laughs> the communication, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> and then I'm getting like the high heart tingles and then the throat. So like there is, there's something there that I'm not quite getting all the way, but there's something important about what you just said. And then the communication. as Yeah. Part. Okay. Yeah. So I'll share, um, a lot of the messages that I've been writing and when I say messages, it's like universal thoughts that are coming through that I'm tapping into that we all have access to, right? I just access it in my own way. And so I'm, I'm beginning to learn more and more that, and everything is all about, um, let me just see how I can put this into words because it's not just words. Again, I'm seeing pictures. I'm hearing, I'm hearing words. I'm seeing things I can't necessarily describe. And it has to do with physics. It has to do with science, right? But it also has to do with divine creativity. And so, um, mm. by the way, sometimes I get a little spun out on these energies too. I'm like, woo, squirrel, where was I? Let's rein it back in. But, um, <laughs> that's why it's really important to ground. <laughs> uh, right. Yep. Um, but the communication. So, um, and I feel like we're delving into so many different aspects because we could talk about opening the throat, the heart and connecting the brain. Mm -hmm. We could talk about, um, what that looks like for different people and different ways that we might've done it. We could talk about the physical sensations that you're getting. Like you're saying, you're getting it around the throat. That's a symbol for you mm -hmm. that maybe we need to delve more into that or mm -hmm. that, you know, it's like, we could go into so many different layers, but I'll just say the communication that's kind of the point. Like there is no one thing, one way, one language, one sound, one frequency, it's all experiential. And yeah. so we're having an experience in a human body. And so we're going to be what I'm sensing mostly lately is our extra sensory abilities are really coming online for a lot of us. Mm. And we're just remembering how to use those. Yes. So it feels weird at first, right? But then all of a sudden, when we just get a little bit more comfortable with them, or we feel a little bit more coherent, mm -hmm. grateful, bliss, we're then able to um, communicate in a different way with our body, with each yeah. other, right? Um, and express what it is that we're experiencing in a different way yeah i i keep hearing or i keep seeing like a blueprint like we each have our own unique blueprint that is only expressed through really the voice but it is our energy too but there is something about our unique voice mm -hmm. that is only ours and i feel actually changes as we evolve and more layers of our trauma, if you will, or shadow kind of gets released, I do feel like our frequency and our vibration, our blueprint that's expressed through the voice changes as well. Yeah, I love that. Subtle, but yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so when I first started going through whatever it was I was going through, um, I was embarrassed to own. Mm. Oh, I think we've wow. talked about this. Yeah. I was like, First of all, I thought it was silly. I went through my yoga teacher training in 2011 and I was just like, <laughs> like giggle, giggle. I've talked about this before, but it's really interesting because then once you start allowing it and feeling more comfortable and just trusting that, you know, it's doing something, yep. all of a sudden these sounds start coming through. So the reason I'm sharing that is sometimes it requires us actually being uncomfortable with our voice. Yes. Yes. Right? Doing it anyway. Yep. <laughs> doing it anyway. You know, taking a speech class, taking a song, a singing class, um, making funny. I always recommend that people make goofy noises. If you feel guided to go outside and yell, 
as long as your neighbors, you know, you're not in like a high rise or something, but um, and even then maybe go for it. Tell, yeah. warn all your neighbors, I'm going to be doing some yelling. Don't <laughs> freak out. Yeah. But, and notice how, the, like you brought up just a really valid point energetically. Notice how the voice changes. Totally. Notice how it fluctuates. Notice how you feel when it changes as it fluctuates. Yeah. Yeah. The more that I, I mean, when I first started, you know, I would own and I grew up in, in a religious home. So I grew up singing a lot, you know, but, but, but in a group, right. And, but if it's just myself, I still have an issue. Like when Carrie does amazing light language and I've been coming into my own recently, but I can do it great by myself. But the minute there's somebody there, I still get a little like, you know, so there's layers, yeah. there's layers to it. You know, yeah. at first just feeling my own vibration and frequency as I'm saying it, that was really edgy actually. Just to sit in my own frequency in the shower, in the bath or whatever I was doing. And then to have my partner there, I'm like, I still have a hard time. So it, there's layers. Yeah. yeah, there are definitely are layers. And it's that, right? It's the, I always call it the sound behind the sound. Yeah. Cause it's like one day and it's not every day. Like some days I do it and I'm not there. It just feels good to do it. And other days I'm there and I don't know what there really is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just feel a certain way. And it is, it's like that deeper layer in a more expansive for lack of better words, vibration, you know, or frequency, everything's vibration. So, but, um, the bathtub and the shower are a great place to do it. And I always, in my car, like when I was driving, I would be guided to make certain noises driving through certain areas, Ooh. which was really interesting. So, um, but that's a sidebar, but one of the things that I've also recognized is, um, once you get into that, you know, that it's like almost like it opens up. If you ever look at a vote at a voice box or look at the anatomy of the vocal throat, mm -hmm. it is connected to, it's like this channel mm -hmm. that's like connected to everything, right? Root yeah, all the way up. Mm -hmm. And essentially the cords that are inside of it. I mean, think about how often we use the word cords in music and heart chords yeah. and strings and it's like that's what we're doing is we're and i'm just in flow with the words but we're plucking the strings playing the chords and this allows us to connect into the higher accordance the accordion mm -hmm. the the um the lungs if you will of i mean the everything's universe. connected i'm just saw the whole body of the universe but and it is our own way of communicating. Sometimes though, it's not even, uh, it's not necessarily that we have to sing, right? Oh, the light language. That's where you were, I was going with that. Like not everybody has to speak light language. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. You know, um, it's not a necessity. Mm -hmm. You can just make uh, tones and, and make, you know, ohms and, and, mm -hmm. and things like that to help it's like you're breaking the seal. That's totally what I was saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then once that opens it, right. It's like a different key. <laughs> Literally. It, it is the key, right? It's the yeah. key that unlocks so many other yeah. dimensions. <laughs> right. But other people do it in different ways too. Some for some people, and we could go into the the third eye, the pineal, we could go into the inner ears. Mm -hmm. We could talk about the solar, you know, everything's connected, but I guess today it's important to talk about the communication and also the heart and gratitude, because yeah. now we're coming back into gratitude, which is the theme, right? And being able to communicate our gratitude. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and how important that is in our development or our progression, if you want to call it that. Is yeah to express it, not just feel it, but to actually express it. Well, and that expression can come from a, a look, a smile, mm -hmm. touch, all of our other senses. It doesn't just have to come from words. True. Don't have to say anything really. But I think what we're kind of touching on is how much of a tool, a valuable tool it is because that, that uh, what I'm hearing is the vocal analysis, it's like it allows us to analyze 
from a different frequency sound harmonics essentially then connecting us to soundology which is like a sine wave technology that is our own inner technology that is coming through from source that we are then connecting into in tune to tune into and we're essentially that's our main source of communication is our our sound and our voice mm -hmm. so i don't know where i was going with that but the flow <laughs> The flow. The flow is real. <laughs> it is real. <laughs> oh, I love that. What else are you feeling? I'm just kind of tapping back in to see what else is wanting to come through. Well, I think just so many branches of that, of that, of what we're discussing with the communication and gratitude um, yeah. and trust. Yeah. Yep. I, it, I mean, that's kind of the theme right now. And for me, the theme is like, open to all forms of communication um mm. and for me that means synchronicity sound picture touch telepathy is another one coming on too oh yeah pretty strongly at least in my world but you know yeah. Um, I'm sure there's going to be people that are curious about that. Do you want to go into that a little bit more? <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. we, we won't have to yeah. do the whole video, but yeah, I know it's touching it's, my salt lamp right now. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Get a little grounded. <laughs> yeah, I, it's not something that I was intentionally intending to do. Um, yeah, but yeah, it just starts happening. Just like some of these intuitive abilities started coming online. That one uh, over the last year has been just happening. And what that looks like for me is, uh, being able to communicate with a person who's not even present in my physical space through our minds. And sometimes, you know, message, and actually not just like a physical human like Carrie and I, but it would be like my higher self or guides or, yeah. you know, if you want to call it, they just drop in a message telepathically and it comes in in a little package. <laughs> Like Harry <laughs> Potter and the owls. It's crazy. And then all of a sudden I've got, and then I guess that's what some people call downloads, but to me, it's a telepathic communication. And at times it has come in as an actual voice that is communicating to me. Um, mm -hmm. And, but a lot of times, like I've had it with, you know, family members, my partner, and sometimes it doesn't happen on purpose. It's just, you just, all of a sudden you're connected to that and you, it's undeniable. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I might need to look at boundaries for myself. If this, if this That's a whole other video. I know. That's right? like, I mean, because we could go into so many different places with that. But yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. once you open to this stuff, you do have to set boundaries for sure. And um, well, yeah. I mean, that's the that's the that's the going back to coherence. Because then all it's because it, we would argue one might argue, well, we're all one, right? Mm -hmm. So we're all tapping to the same thing. Um, but again, it's it's our experience as a human, you know, not everybody wants to have the same experience. Yeah. So I don't necessarily want to tune into everybody's experience yep. from one perspective. I mean, we could go into to, to so many different layers there. And really, um, that's just an added bonus. It's not about the telepathy. It's not about the clairvoyance. It's not about the clairaudience, mm -hmm. even though it feels like if that, if I were only this, or if I could only see that, then this would be better. Mm. And in reality, none of that matters if you're not in your heart. 100%. Oh. So that brings it back to, you know, back full circle. Gratitude. Yeah. Gratitude. Right. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's not like we're always going to feel that way if somebody pulls out in front of us and causes a car accident at the time we're gonna be like, I'm so grateful that that person just ran me off the road. <laughs> but, but finding an ability to say, okay, this experience, you know, I'm grateful that I wasn't hurt or I'm grateful nobody was hurt or, you know, finding some little piece in that to help not drop us into this deep state of, of, um, but that's a whole other ball of wax too because it's okay to be in those deep states sometimes totally totally i mean that's part of the experience too because sometimes we can't find that place of gratitude coming from the vibration that we're in and that means we might be in deep shadow work
processing all of this and gratitude so far away from us that we don't even know how to get there. Yep. And that that's okay. Yeah. Letting that be okay. Because that can shift in a day sometimes for somebody, 24 hours, yep. right? They might go, wow, I don't even know why I was feeling that way. But today I feel a little bit better. And that's, you know, you know, that when then we can start practicing from there. So it's always kind of meeting ourselves where we're at mm -hmm. uh, from one perspective, because if we're forcing ourselves to feel something that we're not feeling, then I guess that would be spiritual bypassing a little bit, right? From one I, perspective. I so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's not the only definition for that. But then we're bypassing and say, nope, I feel great. Yeah. I'm going to be grateful when in reality, there's this big elephant in the room and we're like, ignoring it exactly yeah yeah and actually speaking of the energies right now i've um i've noticed i'm able to shift out of that space faster um than i, I used to be if, if i got triggered it would take like a week or something some sometimes to pull out of it and yeah even just yesterday i i got triggered over something and normally it would have tanked me for a day and mm -hmm. i was able to shift out of it in an hour hour and a half yeah and it, not because I did anything different though. It was just like something is shifted within me to a place where I, it's almost like I've practiced enough that I know, I know what's happening and I can release it faster. Yeah. Um, I don't know without bypassing it. So I, I acknowledge it. I do the thing and then it shifts. I yeah. love that. Yeah. yeah. I feel the same way for the mm -hmm. most part, mm -hmm. even if I'm in it, you know, I call it being in it. We've talked about this, like we're in it. Yeah. Um, I, it, it definitely, it's more, I feel like oftentimes for a lot of us, not everybody, but I think the key is that, that we've done the work. Yeah. Like not to say there's some people that don't need to do the work. They just, you know, and you're like, how is it that that person <laughs> has done all this work I know. and that person's over there just eating their big fat ice cream sundae. I totally. about what they eat the world's falling down around them and they're just like look at the clouds <laughs> and that's how they've always i mean that's just their journey i know i had some jealousy last week come up about that like wow i hadn't feeling jealous right now i haven't felt jealous <laughs> in a long time but <laughs> like really wanting that my life back <laughs> yeah yeah i i kind of had the messages from from my higher self from one perspective i just let me rephrase that a little bit. I acknowledged and recognized within myself the shift from um, seeing things from a, just a different perspective. So sometimes, so I kind of asked myself, like, why am I going through this again? Or why am I back in this place that I thought I had already climbed out of from one perspective? Mm -hmm. And it was like, well, there was some stuff at the bottom that was real, real, that were real nuggets that you missed the first time around. Totally. So now you're back and you're able to kind of collect that, that stuff because I chose to go back and collect that stuff because then it made my experience more um, complete or fuller. I don't know if that's really even a word, more full, fuller. <laughs> I've been making up so many random words that I'm not really sure anymore, but yeah, it just made it more, um, there became, it became more nutritious. I love that. <laughs> Easily digestible. <laughs> yeah. There was more digestives that I had there to digest, Yeah, but it was, it was a little frustrating until again, I went back into that place of somewhat coherence and, and found myself in a space where I could then kind of look at everything from a more, from a more neutral observer. Mm. and be less angry, which is being pulled into the emotion of it. I felt anger. I felt, you know, frustration, but then I wasn't, like you said, it didn't take me as long to digest that. Right. <laughs> integrate, you know, integrate it or uh, move through it. Yeah. You know, instead of skip it and be like, okay, I'm not even going to deal with that. Although sometimes we do need to do that you know, for our own sanity, we have to skip it and then come back to it later. Yeah. That's like to. the reality of this mm -hmm. 3d world. Yeah. We can't fall apart all the time, <laughs> even if we want to. <laughs> right. Yeah. Some of yeah. us have things we have to do. Right. 
some people have kids and families and jobs and you know it's again bringing it back into balance and it is about um consistency so it is about finding a consistent practice yes you know like i'm always really like you're like i'm going to yoga and i'm like oh i should be doing that because <laughs> it's I, uh, so valuable yeah committing like a you know you always hear about gratitude practices like i'm gonna do like a gratitude challenge or whatever and everyone's on that train this month that's great um but it's just to do it more often than than just uh thanksgiving <laughs> um it's so important yeah i've been actually really light sensitive lately too oh is your head okay are you feeling yeah light sensitive um sound sensitive that's something else to kind of recognize that's something that is i think normal oh yeah yeah when that happens for me, I feel like that's when I'm processing something when I just, it's almost like a no, no more stimuli can come in because I'm already saturated. So I love the fact that you're bringing that up. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's important because sometimes we're on that track of like more, more, more. <laughs> yeah. And your yeah. body's like, no. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, maybe we could um, Flo? talk about what's that? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to mention, you know, you and I have talked a little bit about what our bodies have been going through, but if there's anything specific for you that's come up, you know, or I can share my story too around my back. I mean, we've just both been going through a lot of what, what I normally would have called like a crisis is now I'm really bringing gratitude to it and seeing how my body is my ally and it's helping me to move into this next stage that's how it feels my body is actually helping me move into this next stage yeah but it feels my ego thinks it's falling apart and <laughs> everything's going to hell in a handbasket <laughs> yeah um yeah well i think you should continue and talk about that because yeah. i went through um what you're experiencing i've gone through too oh yeah so you have very similar stories when it comes to that yeah, that's great. Yeah, so my back, I've had low back issues. And recently, well, I'd say the last few months, I've had to do some really uh, intense, like craniosacral and chiropractic work on it. Yeah. But even, but just that, it has led me to gut issues. And so it's kind of like, again, it's the mapping that Carrie was talking about earlier. It's like, I feel like my body is becoming so in tune with these energies that it's literally speaking to me in really loud ways now. And it's like, here's your message. And, and if you follow this, then I will lead you to the root cause, which is actually your gut, which is actually gluten, which is actually such, it's like a whole nother can of worms, like Carrie would say, like that opens up into like a, a whole lifestyle shift. Anyway. Totally our bodies are starting to come online because more of us is dropping in mm -hmm. to take the wheel and it's a whole nother surrender, but it feels like a dark night of the souls. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I, I've heard a lot. I mean, you know, that this whole last year has been about health for most people, whether mm -hmm. it's you know, the pandemic or whether it's something else. And I find that interesting. It's either somebody has been sick with the virus or they're actually going through something else that's equally challenging with mm -hmm. their body. So our bodies are upgrading in one way or another. Mm -hmm. So holding space for that, I think. Yeah, I um, went through the same thing. And I think this comes back to doing the work. like. It's not, you didn't ignore it. You did the cranial sacral. You went to um, get, what did you call it? The GI map. Oh, I did there. a GI map and a, um, yeah, I just went food sensitivity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that requires sometimes us doing a little footwork or leg work mm -hmm. to find out what the root of it is. And um, that's part of the journey and experience from my perspective as well, because I had very similar situation and I'm kind of going through it again right now. Um, mm. Like I'm starting to sense, okay, I got to get back on track. Mm. Um, but now I know what those signs are. When I went through it the first time, I didn't know what that looked like until I was full blown in it. And mm. then I was like, how did this happen? Oh, wow. <laughs> was this like four years ago? Yeah. Oh. So Kundalini, um, 
uh, the back, stomach, very similar. I mean, very similar. You're already like online with everything. I was kind of at that where I, I abruptly, I think I had kind of a spontaneous Kundalini and I think I did some spontaneous astral projecting. <laughs> I was <laughs> like, what happened? And my body was like, wow. <laughs> oh my god so and then i was uh i kind of slowed it down after that intentionally because i'm like you know full throttle betty like let's do this let's bring it on let's let's yeah let's just make it happen and then i made it happen and my body like you said it feels like you're falling apart but the body's telling you what it needs in order to so part of that for me it was the learning like i did a lot of research on how to do full, uh, heavy metal detox and i learned a lot from what i should be eating and shouldn't be eating based on how my body felt okay. um i went and did a bunch of tests none of the gi tract tests which i think would would have been good i think mm -hmm. maybe everybody should do that to find out what you're allergic to and all of that but i was more on the route of thinking i was something was wrong with me. Yeah. <laughs> so I went and had a CAT scan and an MRI and I saw a neurologist. And then yeah. finally, when everything was said and done and blood work and everything came back normal. And at that point, I recognize and then they're like, well, maybe you're just stressed out. <laughs> of course, right? Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, I just had this huge pop in my pineal gland the other day oh and then God. i started seeing all kinds of things and they're like yeah <laughs> but i mean that's kind of what happens is you open to this other dimen multi-dimensional variety of us and that looks different so anyways i kind of went off on another tangent but so the physical body is our map, right? It's kind of helping guide us on how fast to go, how slow to go, what to eat, what not to eat. If you're tired, sleep. If you're, you know, and obviously if you're at work, you can't necessarily, or you're operating heavy machinery, you know, <laughs> sleep. Yep. Set, set your intention, say, okay, I'm going to take this weekend to, you know, which is hard to do sometimes if we have other obligations or families and whatnot, but just maybe just pencil in an extra hour or yeah. even a half hour, whatever we can do to support the body, because the body is really supporting us. Yeah, yeah. Um, as best as it can. Whew. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so having taken taking all that into account, did you want to go into a little flow? <laughs> sure. Well, yeah, well, we're already in flow, but but do you want to kind of go back and forth a little yeah, bit? Yeah, we can do that. Or yeah. I'm open. Yeah. I'm open. And I don't know what you're, it's been about an hour. Do you want to keep going? Is your, um, I'm going to, I can, as soon as my, I hear my door open, okay. who knows what's going to come out from behind the door. Um, <laughs> and door number one, um, okay. when I hear that, I'll know it's time to wrap things up. So, but it's up to you. You can kind of keep, I've got another, I know I've got another 10 minutes if that gives. Okay. Kind of yeah. A, let's do a little spontaneous flow. Combustion. Yeah, let's see what happens. I love it. <laughs> I'll let you start. So I'm not. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let me just. So I feel like I have to explain myself, but I yawn a lot, you guys. So whatever that's about. But yeah. Oh, I love the fact that you're sharing that too, Jess, because that's something else that can happen. Yeah. Yawns, burps, um, twitches. And I movements. play. Yeah. <laughs> Totally. <laughs> so you're not crazy. I mean, some people might consider that crazy, but we consider that very normal. Right. <laughs> so funny. <laughs> okay. So yeah, I'll just set our intention to connect to our highest um, timeline and highest um, vision uh, in our highest aspects. anything that needs to be shared about gratitude or anything else that might benefit um, those that are connecting with us today.
So I'm getting, uh, well, a mudra, interesting, but also um, the word connection is coming through. The symbol, you know, the mudra that is this. I don't actually know what this is. Is that yours? No, but I love that. This is where I'm at right now. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this and then connection. And then I was shown, you know, Thanksgiving because that's coming up, but um, also being shown, um, let me see if I can get more. Um, it's so funny, Carrie, this is what's coming in. And I don't know if it's because we're on here together, but what I'm seeing is that do you remember when we would talk about the buffet table? Yes. <laughs> so I'm seeing this like this cornucopia and- Oh boy. <laughs> I know I'm getting goosebumps everywhere. So I'm seeing the cornucopia and then I'm seeing this whole table full of options for food. And then they're referencing it back to our conversation around the body. Um, and let me see if there's more. What is the more about connection? Um, the words that I'm hearing are connection isn't what it used to be. So there's something around breaking tradition that's like really big in the collective right now that I suppose needs to be acknowledged. Um, breaking tradition and um, finding new direction this are the words that I'm hearing. What? But I'll let you... Go ahead, whatever you want to speak to there. Well, got a lot of light language that came through, got some like weird words like in flow. So I'll start with the weird words in flow because that helps me just kind of, well, actually I could do the light language too. I don't know where to go with this. So whatever it's you such want. a cornucopia. <laughs> I know, right? It's such a buffet. <laughs> um, so actually I'll kind of go into a little linear left brain. Action, mm -hmm. and then go into the flow about it. So as you're saying cornucopia, it means something different for me, but it also means the same. So when I, when you say cornucopia, it reminds me of the synchronicities I've had with the trumpet, the horn, mm -hmm. as well as the shoehorn, as well as the inner ears. Ooh. So listening and the cochlea, is that how you pronounce it? Cornucopia, I'm hearing cornucopia. Oh my God. So, um, and that's a whole other flow, but I'll just kind of dip into that. Then the other thing to share about that is what you're speaking about with, um, with the, fa I'm hearing family, familiarization, family, family linearization. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying not to go into crazy word flow. I'm just, Ooh, my heart. Um, because what happens is we have this concept of what it needs to look like in this family tradition. And ooh, this has to do with the crocodile and the alligator, which is family traditions, which is oh ancestor trans trans transitions. Now I'm in flow. Okay, I, I can't slow it down. <laughs> uh, okay, I'll go in a little light language and then I'll just flow into the words uh, in English based off of what you're seeing, which is awesome because it just takes me to so many spins. Oh, now I'm going into just English. So as we go into these spins, as we move out of old traditions and we move into the newer way to traditionally recognize traditions, we sink into this open expandability, this cornucopia, I'm seeing this bandwidth of this horn. Okay, so this has something to do with physics, by the way. This has something to do with where we are um in i think having to do with 11 11 moving into 20 uh 12 12 like there's mm -hmm. there's a lineup here and it has something to do with a spin literally in physics i'm seeing a record and that old um record with the um horn that comes out of the top there's a name for it you know with the dog on it yeah yeah Ooh, maybe it has something to do with series anyways <laughs> so that is one aspect. So we'll go back to the uh, other aspects, though, of the family traditions. So we're seeking to line up with these higher trajectories of how we communicate with our uh, blood brothers and sisters. But our unifications and how we used to link up is not necessarily um, in the same alignment as we used to. Um, I'm hearing it's like not contained within the same container anymore. So if I were to break that down, it's like we're in a different holding space. And so we're holding space for each other in a different way. So it isn't necessarily about, it's not about, uh, it's like Christmas and gifts. It's like not about the same things. It's what does all of this represent to us? It's being together. It's being in gratitude. It's recognizing the individuality and beauty in one another and the ability to be together. 
And it doesn't necessarily mean we have to be together. You said something important about, um, and I lost the words, but it triggered within me. We, a lot of us are talking on Zoom. It's energetically. It doesn't have to be in person. Mm -hmm. Although because of the space that we're holding now, how we interact with each other in person is also shifting. So what I'm kind of seeing is we might have expectations of how things might go. The old, um, I'm hearing the old adages, the old um, idea of, oh, I have to deal with this person or that person's going to be there, but we don't want to see them. We don't want to, we have to do this or we have to do that. And what I'm being shown is a drawing board and just erasing all of that mm. because everybody's in a different space. Nobody's in the same place they were a year ago. So letting go of the expectations of assuming how things are going to go or how things need to happen. And that allows ourselves to be in more flow. It allows us to be more able to receive, <laughs> mm -hmm. back to what we're talking about, the bounty, the gifts and bountiful um, recognition, recognition of this um, uh, communication with one another. But there's so much more. But I'm going to stop there and let you kind of rip <laughs> off that. <laughs> Mic drop. I'm good. No. <laughs> I'm just holding. Woo. That's... So, I mean, I just, I just kept seeing so like through the, like the telepath telepathy, but through the heart, it was interesting. Like we think of telepathy through here, but I just kept seeing members of the family sitting together, but connecting through the heart instead of here. And this, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I even got animals and like the earth kind of came in as you're talking, like we're there's something about the family unit that is shifting and then the clean slate, like that's, something is happening, it's ending. Um, tradition as we used to, yeah. Um, so much. Yeah. So when you said that, I was seeing a picture and I know this is tying it in with Christmas and this isn't a religious thing. I was shown, okay, so I could share so many things, but I was shown as you were talking about the family, I saw the picture of the last supper Mm -hmm. And then I was shown, so I know there's, um, there's somebody that I follow on Instagram who did some kind of rendition about Leonardo da Vinci is that who did the last supper and, um, the, the geometric alignment of how that's drawn out and the mathematical go. composition. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you said the heart coherency, I was seeing each person sitting within a bubble that we're all connected into these bubbles. Mm -hmm. And so when we're in each other's spaces, if we're back in that coherence, we're creating that geometric ping off of one another. And then we're able to fully come into a higher space of compassion, mm -hmm. which allows us to then um, hold. Um, I'm hearing the head of the table. <laughs> <sighs> okay. um, that's huge. Uh, well, since you said that, I'm just gonna share uh, something personal that's really, I think, there's something here. So last night I had Thanksgiving with my family last night, uh, early because of family stuff. And my partner said, why don't you sit at the head of the table? Oh, okay. so, this is what I'm talking. This is, this is, um, perfect example. Yeah. Keep going. Yeah. And I have to say as a woman, that was really hard. I don't like to admit that, but that was really hard. And yeah. I took my seat at the head of the table and, and ooh, even now I'm feeling just that for everyone taking their own seat at the head of the table of their life changes literally the dynamics of the entire family, but uh, yeah, the entire family. And then it's like, a, I'm just seeing like a ripple effect uh, that that then ripples out past just our family. It, uh, so obviously this is like symbolic of how you can take your own seat at the head of the table, but yeah, <laughs> everything that that brings up is, powerful. yeah. And it, you brought up so much just in that like description, because yeah. it's like, what do we believe about the role that we have played as a woman, as a man, as a mother, as a father, as yeah. a sibling, what role we play in that family dynamic. Maybe yeah. we aren't used to speaking up. Maybe we are used to talking too much. Maybe we're all like me, <laughs> maybe we're, you know, depending <laughs> on our role, it's like, even though you're sitting at the head of the table, it isn't necessarily about 
dictating. It's also about mm-hmm. holding space, right? So everybody has fulfilled different roles and everybody is still fulfilling different roles at the head of the table. Everybody's at the head of the table. Exactly. So us stepping up and taking that full sovereignty, I guess, and not, not, and that comes back to coherence. So we're in that space of coherence. We start to stay in that flow and we recognize when somebody needs to speak or when we need to speak or when, you know, I'm just seeing so much there. Now back to the geometries. Um, I see it as a mathematical composition and essentially I see it as sound because when we are, we are sound in, we are light and sound in form. So when we hold that vibration through our um, coherence, implosion, frequency, whatever you want to call it, like you said, that has a ripple effect and it goes out into not, I'm hearing across the table. Mm. So the table is, I'm thinking of times tables, it multiplies. It's a multiplication factor that then allows us to create from that table. It's like your, it's like a platform. Yeah. like Like a foundation table and i'm also being guided to to ask ourselves what does the table represent when we're at a family dinner interesting Ooh, it's a lot i mean think of if we if we start to think of this as a multi-dimensional experience it doesn't just become about what we're eating and what we're talking about it has to do with the sound behind the sound where did the food come from are we blessing it before we eat it Mm -hmm. how do we feel have we complimented everybody about their cooking are we grateful that we have food on the table? Mm-hmm. Um, even if it's not what we expected, can we let go of the expectations of what this preparation should look like? Maybe we're not having Thanksgiving dinner at all. Can we feel grateful about what we are having on this day? Not just this day, but every day. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I see the table as, as you said that, what came in was um, what stands between, what still stands between you and them? Like, what is it still that's blocking full unconditional love for that person? Me, just full unconditional love. Yeah. So recognizing what's in between you. Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. we could go to so many different places because you brought up the value of the family dynamic. It's like, that's changing. Yeah. Right. That's what you're seeing. Yeah. And part of it is us recognizing that it isn't, even though we're all fulfilling different roles, I don't have to stay in the role of wife, Mm -hmm. woman, female. That's an energy from one perspective. So how can I, what does that mean for me? For me, that means um, compassion, nourishment, nourishing, um, strength, individuality, But also, if you take all those things, sensuality, Mm -hmm. finding our divine feminine, balancing it out with, so, but if you take that and you put it into the male aspect, those are all equally important for the male role as well. So, and the father and the mother and all of these different, it's like these different dichotomies of relationships and what they represent when it boils, when it all, when we boil it all down, essentially, and we I'm hearing trim off all the fat, right? We get, I think I wrote this before it's called a, what do you do when you clarify butter? You know, you get the fat Uh and and then essentially we're all part. I mean, it's, oh my gosh, you go to so many spaces with that. So fun. Um, should I do a little light language? I've got some coming through. through. Do it. Love it. Okay. I'll just do a little bit and then um, maybe go back into just where that leads us. Mm -hmm. Oh, the funny thing is I've got it coming in, by the way, this is that sound behind the sound, but then it goes right into English. So maybe it's not relevant for this message. Mm -hmm. As we hone into these different family dynamics, as we allow ourselves to create from this new space, of freedom, being free to express from our own human potential, we then recognize that within each of our brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers lies a piece of us. For we are connected in all that we are, that we are from, that we are going towards, that we are working within, that we are creating as, that we are connecting with (laughs) in the spin, Again, this comes back to that 
Copia, the buffet. Yes. Um, and as we allow this to unfold, as we allow ourselves to, um, I'm just seeing people sharing stories and then we can feel into their sound behind the sound. What are they really sharing? What are they really expressing? And by us holding space for them to be as um, free as they wish to be, we find a place of compassion and the ability to respect one another, to see each other from a whole new view, to see each other from a whole new perspective and respectively glean information from each other and to share a gleaming view of light in a new academic presentation of respectivity, plays on words. So these are all like different spins on the words. Uh, by the way, this is like other stuff too, but I'm trying to tie this in with the, with the, the family dynamic and just yeah oh beautiful i keep seeing the infinity symbol <laughs> what is that does that have i love any, that i don't yeah and my body just keeps moving in it as um yeah and just yeah i'm not sure exactly what how that ties in but it has something to do with like something about freedom like when you said freedom like everybody mm -hmm. wants to be free it's true like if being able to help somebody express their truth is a way of helping them set themselves free. And then it, on some level, you know, we're giving permission for us to also be able to express our truth. So, yeah. I love that. Full circle. Full circle or full, full circle. figure eight. Right. Which yeah. if you pull it apart, right, it's technically, you can spin it and pull it as a circle, totally. just interlocked on top of each other. It's that twist. Yeah. So, yeah. We're all, it, for me, when I, you say that, I see that we're all on different sides of the coin oh, or on yeah. different sides of the, the eight, but it's all, it's like that, or what is it, an Aurora Boreas yeah, or Aurora. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. know those words up, but yeah. yeah, it's like we are then still on the same coin. We're still on the same figure eight, but we're just in maybe different, different vibrish, vibrations. We have different experiences to offer. Um, I feel like there's more though than right. that you were tapping into in the beginning with the figure eight, um, not just, I think it's kind of tying back into what you were saying with changing how we, how we show up like with dynamics and tradi yeah. tradition. Interact. Yeah. Um, Yeah, there is more. I'm having a hard time putting it into language, though. Like, I just feel that there's some collective shift happening and it does. It's not a it's not like a coincidence that it's around holiday and how we communicate, how we I just have a feeling a lot of people are going to notice and have opportunities in the in the next month and a half in holiday to notice how much their voices change, notice how much mm -hmm. they're able to be more in their sovereignty, notice how much the person that they've maybe not been talking to in the family has now shown up differently. And they're, it's going to be like a surprise. I feel like people are going to be surprised yeah. somehow that things are going to be different. I am hearing a song playing in my head, like loud. Um, <laughs> can we give love, give love, give love. Um, oh, give love one more chance. It's um, I'm hearing mm -hmm. queen and Bowie. <laughs> Dun -dun -dun -dun. Um, what is that under pressure? Oh, under pressure. But it's not that part of the song. I'm hearing like the end of it, like the chorus. Mm -hmm. I think it's under pressure. But having said that, it's like there's, I feel like there's so many, whoa. So when I say queen, right, I'm thinking the head of the table. Yep. When I say Bowie, I'm thinking of Cupid, draw back your bow, because I was writing about this the other day. Mm. Uh, also, I was singing Bowie the other morning when I woke up, which was the alligator song. But Anyways, um, back to crocodile and traditions. Um, I think what you're seeing is, that's, I feel like that's so awesome because I think I've been seeing it in general um, with other people. Like, I feel like things have shifted from, from one perspective. I mean, we're still gonna have those experiences that are like, oh boy, that person really yeah. Yeah, hasn't changed at all 
or maybe my um, view of them hasn't changed, you know, whatever, because sometimes, or maybe they're triggering me because that's something I need to work on. You know, I could go, we could go down that rabbit hole, yeah. but if we're looking at this from a higher perspective and just a more expansive per perspective, when you see a figure eight, I see us being in the center of the figure eight. Mm. So we're the figure head. Ooh. Okay. I mean, as responsible, sovereign, mm bringers of the way of being in that space of coherence that puts you in the center mm -hmm. and then that creates that spin of that infinite symbol and it's almost like when that, when the, when we're in that space it has that ripple effect and that's where heart math talks about coherence it's contagious it's like that person may show up feeling stressed and having anxiety, but when we get into the center of the figure eight and we hold that space, that gives them the opportunity, should they choose to take it, they have freedom of choice, they don't have to, to feel into our spin. Mm -hmm. And we're not pushing it on them, bringing it back to boundaries, we're just being us. Yes. It's, an, it's, we're, you know, it's that we're communicating with the sound behind the sound. They may not understand what it is that we're saying, and we may just be saying, hi, how are you? But we're saying it from the heart. Right. And they're feeling what we're putting down, literally. Mm -hmm. And that in itself can create a space where they can just maybe relax. Mm -hmm. Or it could trigger them and they might just get more deeper into it. But that's irrelevant. What's more important is how we come to sit at the head of the table. Mm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing like tuning, tuning forks. Uh, so I saw the figure eight and on each side of the figure eight was these tuning forks, you know, the resonance. So one tuning fork is going off and this one's like starts vibrating, you know, exactly. I just, yeah. Helping each other without words communicating mm -hmm. through that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that comes back to all again, why it's so impart, important to, to practice this, to, mm -hmm. to, to do it consistently to acknowledge when we're not in it, recognize it, do the work, and then bring that with us when, we, when we're interacting with our fellow family members. And when I say family, the word human is what comes up, right? Because it's not just about our- Blood family. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's our, we all have DNA that is holographic from one perspective. Woo! Yep. <laughs> I feel like I might have to end on that note. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah. my dog's tail thumping out there. Oh, cute. <laughs> oh, be Speaking yeah. of heart coherence. Yeah. Well, Ooh. thank you. This was awesome. Oh, yeah. thank you. This was fun. I know. We Super will fun. be doing this more often. Yes, we will. Ooh, now that we're able to stabilize just a little bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, for not planning anything, this is fun. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's usually, I think what works out the best, especially lately. And that's something valuable to speak about too. I feel like part of this is just that's being in flow. Yeah. Yep. And it just comes in. I agree. Yeah. But mm -hmm. so, um, should I just wait and then you can sign off? I don't know how that works. Oh yeah. I think, I'm going to say, let's say our goodbye and then I'm going to end. So okay. thanks everybody. <laughs> thanks guys for watching yeah, thank you so and much. sharing in this space with us and happy um, gratitude day. Happy being in gratitude every day. Yeah. But, oh, by the way, really quick, I want to share too on a sidebar. <laughs> it also, when we're, when we're together, you know, if we are um, able to meditate, pray together, and have that ripple effect, right? When two or more gather, mm -hmm. like we can come into that higher space and it doesn't have to be complicated. I think that's important just to say really quick too, right? Oh no, that's perfect, Carrie. That was perfect. Cause that image that I got earlier with this symbol was two or more. Oh you know, uh, yeah. Two or more. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the eight, even though it's eight, but it's two, you know, it's kind of that two. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Um, so just, setting that intention, like you said in the beginning, having yeah. that focus of, of maybe speaking about what everybody's grateful for and really coming into the heart and, you know, maybe doing something very simple to get everybody to kind of 
get out of their logical left brain, get into the space or connect the two. It doesn't have to be getting out of it, but connecting the two. And then that, you know, our, our, our bubbles go out with like 15 feet. I yeah, think maybe so. even as much as 30 so. when we're in that space. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. So it's powerful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that was it. Thanks guys. Thanks Jess. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Talk to you guys soon. To Thanks be continued. So much. Yep. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>